Greetings, fellow La La Lands. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And welcome to the Main Street Cinema, the show where we discuss the finer points of filmmaking. And tonight we are going over the 2017 Academy Awards and giving our overview of the nominations, giving our predictions, so on and so forth, some snubs and whatnot. Dragon, it always bothers me that they have the year of the Academy Awards be the year it's broadcasted and not the films that are being awarded that particular year. Like, this really should be the 2016 Academy Awards. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's always always bothered me. That's always been a sticking point with me. (laughs) Yeah. But anyways, anyways. So, Dragon, uh, I'd say it's fair to say I've seen a lot more of these movies than you have. Yeah, that'd uh, be a fair assessment. (laughs) I've heard buzz about these, especially through kind of the mouthpiece of uh, Fat Man and Batman, so I kind of know it. Yeah, I got at least the... I get an idea of what m- the majority of nominees are about. I-, I think you'll probably mostly be covering the snubs. No, no, but I mean, again, I've heard, <laughs> stuff, like, you know, I've, I've seen things here and there, I kind of get the gist of a few, but again, you'll enlighten me here and enlighten them. I will, folks. I will. Oh, yes. Maybe in my shoes, too, because, again, we can't all see the nominees, because let's, let's also face it, you know, uh, Oscar Oscar films, as well as films that are thought to be kind of Oscar contenders, are always put in, in theaters for, like, a limited time, and they're kind of hard to see. Yeah, I've actually, uh, this year is the most Best Picture nominees I've ever seen uh, in terms of, like, at least at least since they bumped the nominees from, like, 5 to 10. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I think I saw all all five in 2007. 2007 was a fan, like, that was a landmark year for me. What was that but, year? Uh, uh, 2007, like, There Will Be Blood, No Country for Old Men. Those two were, like, the big ones. Uh, mm. There were also a lot of really good ones. Uh, right. Anyways, so, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, you know, like I said, I've seen eight of the nine Best Picture nominees. The only Best Picture nominee I have not seen is Hacksaw Ridge, uh, mostly because, like, I, I, I appreciate Bill Gibson's movies, but I, I don't know, Drake, it's weird. It's like I, I can normally stomach violence, but he has a way of shooting violence where it's just more visceral than almost any other director. So I, I like to watch Mel Gibson's movies with a pause button in hand. Let's just say that much. I will say this. I did, uh, again, unfortunately, I, when we get to it, I'll, I'll, I'll share like a few that really caught my eye in terms of ones I definitely will be checking out. Cause some of them right now, what they're doing the kind of bolster kind of what people are seeing. They're putting a few of the nominees, especially for documentary, which I had the most to say on, I guess, when we get to that section. But uh, just surprisingly, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the streaming site, especially Amazon, Amazon Studios, was really busy this year with the Oscars. Uh, they, uh, uh, they're they're putting, they're making it more wide so people can, they're releasing it more widely so people can at least watch the nominees or be able to rent them easier. So they can. Can you rent La La Land? Well, again, eventually be, some of them will be free. So again, we'll we'll see. I, I don't know if like. And you haven't read La La, the, La, La, La Land yet, even though the I instant <laughs> that it is available to me, I will see it. Okay, fair enough. All right. <laughs> With all this hype, you're bound to be disappointed by it. I just know it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, all right, Dragon. So let's jump right into it. Uh, quickly give our, you know, like I said, quickly give our predictions and also kind of my overall thoughts. Uh, and your overall thoughts as well. So let's start with. Uh, for some reason, we're on the official. This kind of this kind of bothers my OCD a little bit. The fact that the screenplay awards are at the bottom of the page in spite of the fact that the screenplay awards are one of the big ones but whatever we'll we'll deal with it we'll deal we, we don't run it. the oscars tiki it's their <laughs> if they want to start with writing if only the actual oscars would start this way then we at least we have some good stuff in the beginning instead of building all to the end okay so let's, let's face it when you watch the oscars if they could just like watch it on demand and they just skip to the you know like the last like, kind of last half hour <laughs> all right so original screenplay here we have uh Hell or High Water, La La Land, The Lobster, 20th Century Women, Manchester by the Sea. Uh, Let me ask you this. Do you have, there's, out of all these, the only one I haven't really heard about is The Lobster. Right? Can you tell me anything about it? Okay, The Lobster is a funny case. Like, it's one of those movies, like, I actually tried watching it and had to turn it off. Yeah, I think you brought up The Lobster <laughs> once when you were doing, like, the rundown of the uh, of the movies uh, for uh, 2016. It, it, it's just one of those movies. It's... The Lobster, like, it's weird. It's got, like, a really weird kind of, like, tone to it. It's, it's, eh. it's it just, like, like I said, I just couldn't finish it. Like, I, I was trying to watch it at home. Uh, it's It feels like one of those movies that I would love in high school, but since I've matured, 
since high school, I feel like a lot of like the like, ooh, look at us, we're being indie and artistic. It's one of those kind of movies, you know what I mean? I, I thought it was kind of too clever for its own good. But I can totally see why people like it. Um, so, yeah, 20th Century Women was good. Uh, I think 20th Century Women is kind of forgettable, but it was a good sit. Uh, it's not going to be one of them that like really sticks with me. Manchester by the Sea, I'm honestly kind of surprised, isn't based on some sort of source material because that's just a super powerful story. Uh, that's the one I can't that. wait to watch when it because on Amazon, that's an Amazon Studios production. I'm mm -hmm. convinced, and that one, that uh, basically uh, I'm waiting for. Them, it should be free. I'm assuming after the Oscars, can make some of them free on Amazon. That's what I'm hoping for. I can't wait for on Amazon Prime. I, I mean, you know, like, I mean, it's like it's, it's not a fun watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I'm hearing a lot of good buzz about it though. Like it's, it's really a great cool movie. Stuff. Like I said, it, it's in like it's in like my top five of the year. It's just not a fun watch. <laughs> well, not all movies are fun, Tiki. Some of them are emotional and gut wrenching. Well, you know what movie is fun and emotional and gut wrenching? <laughs> Lava Land. <Yeah. laughs> if it wasn't staring me in the face, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I also hear Hell or High Water is kind of a, it's an under it's kind of an underrated one this year. Like it's basically it's 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 kind of a good it's a good product, but it's not going to get it. It's going to be overshadowed by a lot of the competition this I year. I definitely think know. that's the case. I I think Hell or High Water kind of uh, it's one of those movies where it is very good. It's uh, it was another movie kind of like in my top ten of the year. Uh, I think having said that, it's an August movie and it's kind of like a lighter movie, so. I just think being nominated, it's kind of like an honor just to be nominated for a movie that's not so high scale, that came out in August, that didn't really have... I, I don't really think it had any Oscar ambitions when they made it, you know what I mean? So, uh, so Hell of High Water, is a, it's, it's a great underdog, but... So let's, just going forward, just set this up, Tiki, I don't mean to cut you off, just going yeah. forward, like, let's, let's kind of lay this out, like, aside from snubs, let's go through, like... What should be nominated, and what most likely, again, the prediction and kind of what our personal pick would be, and just because you know the, the realities of the Oscars are a lot of times the ones that should win don't win. Politics. A lot of times. Yeah. So what do you got? Uh, will win La La Land should win La La Land. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that's just how I'm leaning. Uh, I, I'd say Manchester by the Sea would be a good contender, uh, a good kind of like runner up. But yeah, man, La La Land for me, you know how I feel about the movie. I feel like I'm kind of... Is, is it objectively really that good in the writing? In the writing? I mean, the writing, to tell you the truth, is not one of the things that you're going to walk away being like, wow. But just the themes of the movie and uh, the emotion of the movie just really shows through. And for me, just the connective tissue of it all is really good. Having said that, from a sheer writing standpoint, like I said, Manchester by the Sea... Definitely has more complex characters, more emotional dialogue. So, yeah, if you're – I would say for just pure writing, like, it's kind of like I, – I guess maybe for me personally, I definitely still have to go La La Land. But Manchester by the Sea is definitely worthy. Uh, 20th Century Woman, The Lobster, th they're fine. Hell or High Water is really good. Don't think it measures up to either of those two. Right. Uh, for me, uh, honestly, I, I – what I think should win again, I have not seen any of these films, bear in mind, so let me make that clear. Uh, I, uh, so this is going to make this conversation really interesting. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, I think uh, just from, just based off, off the buzz and just seeing, like, again, I've seen, like, maybe a few, very few clips, you know, uh -huh. some trailers and stuff. I'm just saying, Manchester by the Sea, I'm saying from everything I've heard, it sounds like this movie's going to be really smartly written, just given how much they're hyping up the performances by the characters, and they're really good performances like that. You have to have really strong writing, and again, given they're always, there's an intimation there's a, about a dark subject, because no one wants to spoil it. I think it's about a dark subject. Yeah, Most yeah, like, right, I'm, gonna, right. I'm just going to fire a shot in the dark here. The loss of a child, maybe? It's a guess. Oh, I'm not even going to tell you if you don't know. <laughs> I know, that's all I'm saying. My point is, I, I'm not I, saying a word. <laughs> my point is, well, I can't really weigh in on shit. Should. I, I'm going to predict that I think with all the La La Land nominations, I think they're going to try to spice it up and at least give Man give one. Basically, try not to give La La Land all the awards. I think Manchester by the Sea actually might win this one. Okay, you know what, Dragon? I'm actually approaching it with the exact opposite kind of thing that you are. I honestly think it's going to be the La La Land. Uh, I think there honestly might be too much La La Land love. <laughs> it, I'm saying, I, I love La La Land, but I, I honestly think it might make a sweep. And keep in mind, like, it can't win every single award it's nominated for because it's nominated for two songs. 
and it can't win both of those. So, but uh, I think it has potential to win every single award it's nominated for. I really do. Again, I again, part of me thinks that uh, you know, there's. I still, I still think that it, just to spice it up a little, like, no, nah, I don't think Lala's going to win every single. I think he's going to win the majority. I think it's, I don't think it's going to win every. Definitely going to win the majority. Yeah. Yeah, of course, <laughs> the majority is not only for like everything. <laughs> right, right. All right. Okay. He's moving forward then. Yeah. Uh, moving up in this case. Moving on up. Okay, adapted screenplay. I have seen all five of these, and uh, okay, Arrival, very good. Uh, not my favorite Denise Villeneuve movie. My favorite Denise Villeneuve movies have been An Enemy and Prisoners. Uh, but still very, very good. Oh, he did Prisoners? Yeah, he did Prisoners. Oh, I love Prisoners. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fences is honestly kind of like, it's funny. I, I don't even think this should be nominated because literally nothing was changed from Fences from the source material. Well, that's still a good adaption, though, if nothing was changed from the source material. Nothing was changed from the source material. I, well, I mean, it's brought to life. It's adapted. I'm saying it's not adapted. It's literally just, <laughs> anyways... <laughs> Uh, Hidden Figures is fine. I, 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 like, it's a good movie. It's pleasant. I think it might be getting a little too much hype. Lion I just saw today, and it's fantastic. And honestly, my personal preference would probably be Lion. Uh, but I think Moonlight's going to get this one. Yeah, I'm hearing a great... I, I really love the idea of what I've heard about Moonlight. That's like three stories kind of coalescing and kind of going together, right? No, it's it's the same character just played by three different actors and three different acts. I'm sorry, I meant like it's like betrayed by three different acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it, yeah, it sounds like, like given the poster too, it's just kind of like you know, the three. Uh huh. Is uh, uh is Mahara Maharsha Ali? Uh, who does he? He doesn't play the, one of the main guys, does he? He's in supporting. I'll talk more about him when we get to that category. Uh, yeah, he, he's only in the first act of the movie, not to give anything away, but uh, mm -hmm. he's he's a, definitely a very strong presence. He, ironically enough, he's also in Hidden Figures. Now, <laughs> I believe I'm hesitant to bring this up, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't address it a little bit. Oh, that, you know, a lot of people are... Oh, no. Look. Do we have to? Do we have to? I'm going to have to bring it when we get the documentary, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm going to have to bring it below when we get the documentary. Let's okay. just say... Let's face it, last year there was kind of an infamous, I'm pretty sure it was last year, that you know, there was, yeah, a, lot of, was. Uh, a lot of protests going on at the Oscars that there weren't enough uh, black nominees in, in the Oscars. Yep, yep. Dragon, and, you know how hesitant I am to talk about any uh, look, look, on this channel. So. We're going to address it really real here, all right? We're not going to get all... Get, here's a prediction. This is a good political we know a lot okay, of If we're going to address that, I, I honestly just have to say right off the bat, I think Hidden Figures is kind of the movie that's kind of overcompensating for that. It's a good movie. It's not really good enough to warrant, like, the... I, I don't think Hidden Figures is the best picture nominee. I'll just put it that there. Like, I think Hidden Figures is... I think Fences and Moonlight absolutely deserve all the praise they're getting. I think Hidden Figures might be a little bit overcompensating. So, I hate to talk about politics, Dragon, but that's I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. Well, know? I was going to say, if, uh, here's a prediction in terms of politics. There's going to be a lot of right. acceptance speeches that are going to criticize the president. I think that one's oh, going to... Oh, gee, you think? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm just giving the SAG Awards. I think, you know, with one as public as the Oscars, you know, I, think, I think everyone's going to be pulling a Michael Moore this year. Right. So, uh, so let's see. Uh, the other point I was making. Oh, yes. Yeah, so again, there are a lot of. Uh, just, yeah, address it briefly, but realistically, here's that. You know, last year there was a lot of buzz. Now, I, I'd like to, again, perfect world. I like to think that's not the case. They everyone just kind of earned their spot this year. They had a lot of good films. Mm -hmm. But let's let's face it. There, I think that's a criticism that might be that might be kind of like secretly kind of chuckled or like, yeah, they they adapted because of the stuff that went out last year. I saw it. And I think I think the results of certain that one of these, like especially when you get the documentary, I think like if certain picks get it just because they they are what they are instead of being quality works. Okay, not I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're getting at. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We'll, <laughs> we'll get there. And I think some of the again, basically, yeah, they, that, that's basically what I mean, though. Just like if certain if certain uh, choices, which again, mainly in documentaries, what I'm really going to get. Uh -huh. this, you know, I think if certain choices are getting it just because you know they are, it, it's a, it's it's a black actor, it's it's a it's a, it's a black. Um, you're predominantly black cast or anything, because that's the wrong reasons. You wanted to get it for quality work, which I hear you. I hear you. Let me like see. I said, uh, like I said, on my end of things, Hidden Figures is a good movie. It, it, it's like a good, like, solid 8, 7.58 out of 10. I just don't really think it's 
it's best picture worthy. But well, let me tell you what I'm thinking on the adapted screenplay before I get into okay. snubs. Uh, I think just again, I know better, what your snubs going to be, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, uh, in terms of uh, what I think of these choices here, I think uh, in terms of just kind of adapted screenplay, you're right. The offense is really is, it feels pretty, from what I've seen, what I've heard, it's like pretty much like a play, but it has like a truck at the beginning. It's the exact same. Yeah, it, there's a garbage truck at the very beginning, and then it's a play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which you know isn't the most thrilling ad adaptation. Uh, honestly, again, you know, I hear a lot of great buzz about Arrival, and I think Arrival might be like uh, one of the big battles going on between like who's going to get the best pitch to me, Arrival versus a lot of the other contenders we have going on here. I'm hearing amazing things of Moonlight, so I, I don't know the source material on what Moonlight's based. So it's based on a that, play, and it's very oh, it is? based on a play. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, it, honestly, I'm saying just going with adapted screenplay. It sounds like Hidden Figures would be the one to win, not. Because again, it's kind of adapting. <laughs> no, I'm seriously I'm th think about it. Hidden figures again is adapting kind of something from real life, and those, that sounds kind of tailor made for the you know, best adapted screenplay section to me. I'm just saying in terms of like if they really want to, if it's versus like what is best adapted I'm just saying, versus in terms what is of the quality, best. In terms of quality, I would probably rank this as like I would honestly maybe maybe rank Arrival as number one, Lion as number two, Moonlight as number three, Hidden Figures as number four, Fences number five. For me personally, based on personal taste, since I've seen all five of these, I'm saying what I'm, what I was saying is that again, it's like in terms of if it's like you know, what's what's kind of best adapted from the events of real life, or was the best of the like was the best kind of film that happens to be, you know, an adapted screenplay. Because if it's like what's the best film, it sounds like Moonlight might be the one to get it. But in terms of like what it's like adapting events from real life, it sounds like uh, not even just real life. What's adapting the the source material best? It sounds like just sounds like you know, hidden figures might be good. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. So I guess uh, I'm predicting Moonlight's gonna. I'm predicting Moonlight's gonna get. I wouldn't count Arrival out. Arrival might be like a second but i think moonlight's gonna i'd say arrival has a decent shot i'd say it's probably be for me like in terms of predictions i would definitely say it's probably between like i'd say hidden figures moonlight arrival like you do make a good point about hidden figures it wouldn't be my personal choice but i could see them going that way uh i, I well, think i think the two main contenders are going to be moonlight and arrival yeah I think well, I definitely just again bear in mind I can't really weigh in too heavily on should I'm gonna say Moonlight should get it but the one that might get it, honestly it might be Hidden Figures whether it's for the reasons we want or not Hidden Figures might get it uh, now let me mention of course the snubs because I think uh, of in terms of adapted uh, screenplay we did get uh, some some uh, some big things I think definitely whether it should or should not be nominated for uh, for other categories the one it definitely should have been nominated and won it for in my opinion uh, Deadpool. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous, Dragon. It's ridiculous. Uh, the fact that Suicide Squad is an Academy Award dominee and they couldn't give Deadpool anything. Are you? I completely forgot. Suicide Squad's not Makeup. nominated? Makeup. Oh, come on. That is this. And not only that, but I we'll get to it when we get to it, but I honestly think Suicide Squad is the front runner in that category. Oh, God. That, <laughs> oh, my God. It's killer. Oh, my God. It's killer cry. <laughs> Deadpool, the Deadpool makeup. All right, all right. Hey, all right. hey my point is, uh, seriously, Deadpool had a really excellent Out of all the right? categories, Deadpool should have been nominated for it. Definitely should have been at the screenplay. Other stuff will be like, oh, you just want Deadpool nominated. Yeah, but this one, the Deadpool actually did really earn because the script has always been the thing that's really been kind of the backbone of the film. The writers really, and the mm -hmm. script has always been super strong with Deadpool ever since the first R rated draft. Now, the only thing I could think of that would, again, you can't really weigh legitimacy in a lot with the Oscar stuff because, again, a lot of it is kind of there's some politics involved. But let's face it. Uh, the only the only legit kind of legitimate reason I could see the Deadpool not because Deadpool had a lot of drafts, but then again, a lot of mo movies have a lot of drafts. It's a question of which one would be kind of up for the specific screenplay, sure, the one that sure. got to the very end. So that's the only reason I could think maybe Deadpool might not make the cut. But in all seriousness, again, Deadpool had like uh, its heart and soul was in that screenplay, and it was just, it was all it's all quality, all really all really strong stuff. Again, you had humor. It had it was, again every like ninety percent like. Trying to think, seventy percent of the of the first draft was in the was in the finished movies. That to me is impressive. That to me is like a, a good adaptation. It's very representative of the character. So again, Deadpool for me was the big snub for the uh, adapted screenplay. But again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in figures uh, be a prediction, but Moonlight probably should get it. Okay. Also, really quick with the original screenplay, I would honestly swap any one of these films out, even La La Land, for the nice guys. Oh, that would. Oh, yeah, you're right. That would I get, think it's yeah, kind yeah. of a travesty that the nice guys didn't get nominated here. Nice guys should have been nominated over the over like twenty over the lobster probably. Over the lobsters or 26th, 20th century women. Either yeah, way. yeah, over one of those yeah. two. Yeah, I, not nice guys would be a strong uh, would be a strong writing nominee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to bring Me that too. up. Okay. 
Oh, no, sure. I, I didn't think about it. You're right, though. You're absolutely right. Visual effect. Now, this is one's a real tough this one. Is really yeah, impressive. this is a really tough one. Um, okay. Yeah, this, uh, there are a lot of great choices here. Uh, Deepwater Horizon, I definitely think, is probably the underdog here. I, I saw it. It was a good movie. The effects were good. It's it's not anything that blew me away, though. Uh, Doctor Strange, of course, we've got all that great surreal imagery. I, I would Hands! Say, I would say The Jungle Book is probably the front runner. Because I know, it is it's really revolutionary. And Rogue One is so good. Like, Rogue One looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's my personal favorite. Let's give it up for my boy, yeah. Kubo. Like, come on. Hell you yeah. know I'm pulling for that one for the win. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it's pretty safe to say Deep Blue Horizons will not be uh, yeah, good. Yeah, let's take that. Yeah, I would say it's probably... A, like, I'm sorry, Wahlberg, but you know it's true. <laughs> as much as I love Doctor Strange and as cool as those visuals were, I would probably, yeah. like, I'd say it's a three-horse race between Kubo I, and I will agree with Rogue you on that. Is again, Mar basically, Mar the problem with Doug Strange is that again, it's kind of fitting into Marvel's like, oh, they always do great work, that sort of thing. Like, you know, it's just kind of, it's yet another great one for them. And to tell you the truth, I honestly think that might be the problem that Rogue One might run into. I don't know. Rogue One still feels kind of, again, they're they're doing something, well, they have to kind of fit into the 70s, basically into that kind of that 70s production design, which I think they do well. That's true, but like I said, it's just like Star Wars, just like we're so used to Star Wars looking amazing. Honestly, Dragon, like the thing about Doctor Strange that does kind everything of like, looks super practical with this one as well. Yeah. Uh, just really quick with Doctor Strange, I don't think it's got a big shot, but I think if anything, they would acknowledge it for just like the trippiness of it all. And it's certainly one of the most unique looking out of the Marvel movies. So, I mean, look, let's say all of our contenders here, they are all, you know, strong, strong contenders, definitely. Oh. Uh, you know, people are resident the trail look okay, but the rest of them are really strong, you know. Uh, <laughs> the Jungle Book, of course, the, the here's the reason it's like a really big race between the top three here, you know, between Jungle Book, Kubo, and, and Rogue One, because Jungle Book kind of take us, took us to a new kind of visual level in live action for Disney. You know, they, they made talking animals work, which is impressive. Absolutely, and not just that. And again, right? not just the one human game. actor amongst you know complete CG. Yeah, it's just the environment. I think is a yeah. real breakthrough with that movie. Is impressive Absolutely. as the animals were. It's the environment Certainly. that's amazing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, Kubo, of course, in terms of stop motion, kind Kubo of like, right? is breathtaking. Yeah. It's a breathtaking movie. It, makes, it is. I I've said this before. I'll say it again. Watching that in the theater gave me like fucking flashbacks of watching. Toy Story in the theater when I was five years old, man. It's the, like it was that powerful of a movie going experience for me. Yeah. So, so honestly, this this is like honestly, this might be one of the toughest categories. It really year. is. It really is, especially with Kubo in the mix. And again, much I love to give it to Doctor Strange. It can good conscience given our three <laughs> top contenders here. So again, the real question: the only Rogue One is only divisive in kind of the without giving away kind of like kind of some of our bringing back oh yeah right i totally forgot about that that's yeah, the that only thing that i could see that would that would maybe <laughs> take it out of the running because again rogue one again it's very great and all the i'm just saying that was just kind of a it that was a personal taste thing so it doesn't it's not really again ostensibly bad or anything it's just the i still think it's a two horse race between kubo and jungle book rogue one might slip in there but I think Kubo and Jungle Book are the well, front runners. I'm going to say this. If we took Rogue One out of the equation, which again, pers uh, Rogue One to me, like for, for me, I would, might be personally just including all three, I would say, yeah, Rogue One should probably, should probably give. But honestly, what should, uh, this is, that's for me personally, but in, in just being ob uh, objective here, uh, Kubo should actually get, Jungle Book probably will get it though. I agree with that. Like, I'll, totally sign off on that that's exactly now, how i feel <laughs> the only here's the one thing we should acknowledge though that I, i'm gonna i'm gonna say that's probably how it's gonna go but there is a slim chance that rogue one could get over the jungle book just because it's star wars there's a slim chance of that if again depending on how the oscar if they're kind of just like in politics of like hey let's put star wars on the duck Everyone likes star wars. <laughs> i just want to address star that again wars. in terms of <laughs> again, just in terms of again, Kubo should you know it's like it's it's beautiful. It's like all that legwork. If oh my god, it's like stop motion. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Jungle Book, you know, took the strides and like again that that one that you know should get. And again, basically there might be a little bit of a bias against the stop motion versus Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, Rogue One just for the marketing side of it, like hey, Rogue One Star Wars, people love this. And of course, there was a there was casualty of course. So. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get into. Can we just tackle the sound editing and mixing all in one? Because it's one of those things where I really, all right, all I can't right, really let's... tell the difference between. Do you know the difference between the two? I'm dumb when it comes to that. The 
Yeah, I know, I know this is but we, I usually kind of reaffirm like the act, like the word for word definition. When we <laughs> think of this time. It's the mixing is the uh, one of them's the sound effects, the other one is just kind of how it's the music that basically how it's all strung together. I'm gonna guess the stringing together is the editing. Uh, oh, yes, yes, I bet. Yeah, the, yeah, the editing is how it's all strung together. The mixing is the the Ben Burt sound effects side of it. The, the Gosh, mixing yeah. is. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. That's always all I have was always th thought of it. Again, I don't have the word for word definition from me, but yeah, that's I'm pretty sure okay. that's how it goes down. Anyway, so just, let's break this down. Uh, yeah. So mixing being uh, mixing being effects, like being the, the noises. So. All right. Well, I have not seen Hacksaw Ridge or Thirteen Hours. Uh, Thirteen Hours. Like, let's count that out of the equation right now. That's not going to win. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Ro I think Hacksaw Ridge will be a contender. But I'm going to give the Rogue One though. Yeah, I, I think I would personally, if I were going, if I were voting, I would probably vote for Arrival myself because Arrival's got some, if we're going on the sound effects side of things, it's got some really cool kind of like alien sounds, you know, and like sounds of like ships and whatnot. I mean, it's not like the most effects heavy movie in the world, but it's definitely got a unique kind of sound to it. Rogue One, like I said, the thing it might not have going for it it's like it's great it's just kind of like it's very familiar um yeah yeah and again it's like i don't know it's like unfortunately i haven't seen arrival i'm just going with what i have seen what i have liked and for me and i'm gonna say should rogue one but in terms of will i mean in terms of what we'll probably get against between arrival and hacksaw ridge and it'd probably be arrival because they want to give rival a few awards to I'm going to guess Hacksaw Ridge is going to win this actually i i haven't seen hacksaw ridge personally but if I had to guess, I would say they would swing that way. So we'll see. That's it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so sound editing. Okay, so I again, Hacksaw Ridge is the only one of these I haven't seen. Uh, see, here's what I'm saying. I think mixing would be like kind of original alien sounds for for arrival. Mm -hmm. This one for me is like how like in the battlefield you're mixing everything together. Saying Hacksaw Ridge might win this. Gotcha. One. That's what okay. I'm saying. Um, having said that, I also think that there's. I'm sorry, Dragon. There's got to be some love for La La Land here because. La La Land does a fantastic job of mixing uh, diegetic and non-diegetic music. It does a fantastic job of uh, weaving in all the, uh, you know, all the sounds into kind of like a tapestry in a way. Uh, and so, like, I, all five of these are strong contenders. Deepwater Horizon is a strong contender here. That's got a really, that's got a lot of, uh, you know, just a, a lot of power to it. Sully's really good. Sully's got a lot of good kind of like airplane work in it uh obviously but um i'm, I'm probably i think it's a safe bet hacksaw ridge is going to get it dicky okay hacksaw ridge all right uh my person the, the oscars love battlefield stuff they really do that's true that's true okay uh do you have anything to say about the short films because i really don't <laughs> uh unfortunately yeah i'm pretty uh, uh, animation will definitely have stuff of course yeah so let's let's get to the uh, uh yeah yeah sorry folks we don't really have anything well, let's let's least give them a shout out so let's say the names okay. um okay there's silent nights yeah there's yeah. time code time code Same. looks interesting just based on the poster i'm just gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna give it the time code just because i like the title <laughs> okay okay and to be fair, you know, there's like some, but in, in the ads, there'll be a, like one guy running the Oscars saying, okay, well, here, what are the votes in for? Ah, okay, let's go with the, like, the title on this one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Rogue One. No, that's, that's nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get to short film animated. Uh, I have not seen Va Blind Vashia, uh, Pear Cider, and Cigarettes, or Pearl and Pearl. <laughs> If only it were actually about right. But, right. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, uh, I think the again, we unfortunately when the Oscars roll around, we never are really able to see kind of foreign short films. But uh, I believe you can stream them on Amazon, but you might have to pay for it. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Right. Right. Anyway, right. Um, so of course, uh, Tiki and I have both seen uh, Borrowed Time and Piper. Now, Piper was a really great animation, yes, but I think it, for us, we're unanimous. I, in I am so choice. I am crossing my fingers so hard for Borrowed Time. Um, honestly, Borrowed Time might be the thing that I want to win the most out of anything in the whole show. I am holding my breath for Borrowed Time. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else it was. Um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go with you. For, that might be my most anticipated, too. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. one I'm definitely... I, 
Honestly, I think it has the best shot at it. Then again, a foreign one might kind of you know, kind of come out of left field and steal it. So, uh, yeah, I think there is like I think we with this kind of category, we always have to acknowledge the shot that you know like something like pear cider and cigarettes or something like that could come out. Like we have no idea what that is, but it could just blow everyone away. You know, like, and to give credit where credits due, Piper was really visually interesting. It was kind of a nice, sweet story. But again, Bar Time was an experience, man. My God, yeah, it had exactly, sort of levels. Exactly. That, yes, it had a little bit of dialogue, but that's again, that's nothing to take away from the short as, as you can. I mean, uh, some people will say, you know, shorts are best play without dialogue. And that's not always true. I mean, this yeah, used mimble dog. And importantly, as we went over when we talked about this in great detail, uh, the, the bits of dialogue that are usually like these are the ideas like, again, it's always rare for, for a short to kind of have the dialogue. You know, the fact that this dialogue is like stuff you can imagine is playing through the guy's head over and over again from this traumatic incident right, right. and uh, again this is i love the fact it'd be kind of an unofficial pixar film going up against a pixar film <laughs> so, and again honestly again they're both good but borrowed time is just it's something else it's just oh my god it's like it, it's it's very moving it's so well done it's it's like different again it could usher us into some new stuff in animation if, if, heck, oh, yeah. if it gets the oscar it might kind of confirm some stuff who knows we'll see okay production design Ooh. okay Okay, Arrival, Fantastic Beasts, Hail Caesar, Passengers, La La Land. Now, tell T, I want you to consider this. Uh, yep. So, of course, La La Land and Hail Caesar, Caesar are kind of going for kind of an old school Hollywood vibe. So oh, you... I, I, I ha I've seen bits and pieces of Hail Caesar. It's one of those movies that I haven't been able to get through just because it's, it, let's just say it's not on the stronger side of the Coen Brothers' work. Um, I, I think La La Land has it beat hands down in terms of, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, the production design on Hail Caesar is good. Um, I would I would probably give a shout out to Fantastic Beasts here as well, because Fantastic Beasts does do, one of the things you have to consider with Fantastic Beasts, Dragon, I know you're not a Harry Potter guy, but uh, literally everything we've seen in Harry Potter thus far has been in uh, the UK. And Fantastic Beast takes place in New York. So what Fantastic Beast does really well is it kind of takes all the iconography of Harry Potter, but kind of translates that to an American culture. And so I would definitely give a shout out Fantastic Beast way. Um, well, you know, let me let me address this. I'm not, it's not like a super kind of sticking in my crawl snub, but I'm just keep thinking about it here. You know, Deadpool has seriously has excellent production design when you think about it. There's a few. There's a few this year. I would honestly even say, freaking Kubo. Well, it's, yeah, but that's kind of you're drifting into. Well, it's, well, technically, yes, you're right. I'm trying to think. Now you bring it up. Like, yeah, I mean, it is. It's it is dominated it's, for best visual is. effects. I'm saying it's practically. No, I don't mean like it's like almost. I mean it's actually practically there. So I mean, there mm -hmm. do the sets do exist. So, <laughs> so <laughs> technically, yeah. I mean, I just was thinking of the kind of the animation. Do like, well, no way? It's all physically existing. So yeah. But you're also actually, right about Deadpool. Deadpool has like, especially like Deadpool has a lot of Easter eggs in the background. And honestly, like if that. Kubo were up for it, though, I would say 100% Kubo should get it because it is you know physically existing. A lot of man, of course, you see at the end of the Kubo credits, and you know, they show you the the amazing productions on the giant. You know. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah. arrival's good, but it's also just kind of like a lot of like hallways and you know like laboratories and stuff like that. So. I haven't seen passengers, but just the uh, the passengers in space, right? It is in space. Yes, I know it sounds vague. I'm just saying. I'm pretty, I just want to make sure. You know, again, just with the like, I'm pretty sure it's in space. I'm just saying they're float. They actually float in the thing, right? I have no idea. I haven't even seen the trailer for that movie. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen the trailer, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's. Just, I, I, I would say, I would say, out of all these passengers, is the one that's just not going to win at all. But. I mean, that's fair. I'm just saying. Let's face it. Most likely, Lawland's going to get this one's pretty. Uh, most likely, like yeah. I said, like I would probably like me personally. As much as I do love La La Land, as a Harry Potter fan, I do think that Fantastic Beast was pretty freaking great when it came to well, the trailer did look really nice with the kind of these sets and everything uh -huh. so I, I, I could see that so okay. let me again this passage this passage just look kind of nice but yeah it looks like uh well and we'll get it but fantastic mm -hmm. piece probably be the actual you know one that should get it I mean, don't get me wrong. La La Land is fantastic as well. I mean, those sets are amazing. Like they, they did like the whole freaking freeway scene and everything like that. So if La La Land wins, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. it oh sure, deserves it. Um, I'm saying like the, like the second place would probably be Fantastic Beasts as well, you know. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see. Get oh, yeah, song. <laughs> okay, Audition, The Fools Who Dream from La La Land, City so, of Stars from La La Land, Can't Stop the Feeling from I think Trolls. It, it's embarrassing that that song's there, by the way. Just can't stop that feeling. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Every time I see that, it just makes me. And Deadpool's not nominated for screenplay. Nope. Oh, <laughs> uh, how far I'll go from Moana and the it's empty controls. chair. From... The leaving, the leavings of DreamWorks is on this. I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> the empty chair from Jim, the James Foley story. What? I have no idea. Okay. Again, that's on here. Deadpool. Like, uh, like <laughs> seriously, how? Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count this as snub. Now I think about it. Oh, Let's God. put Deadpool rap on there. <laughs> It, see if the Oscars had a sense of humor, they might, they might get it. Well, wait, would that be a wait? Would that count as adapted song if they put that on there? Oh, I, uh, if Deadpool were not made, wouldn't that count as adapted? I know there's no such category. I'm just asking. If it's original song, like it has to be completely original. So it means if it existed even, based, elsewhere. Then yeah, it wouldn't. I don't know. That's well. That's kind of I guess why. Well, that way the trolls is intellectual prop. No, no, it's still. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So I, I'm figuring. T- can tell me if I'm crazy. You you, you listen to both of these songs. Uh, I, I listen to all. I, I what I like to do with the Astros, like way back when, when they kind of I got the listings. I listen to the songs. So I'm a little fuzzy on it at the moment. But I'm, I, I've heard them before. I think the one I gravitated towards out of the two was uh, City of Stars. So that one I'm thinking is going to be the one that gets it. I would definitely say uh, Audition is probably like the standout of the whole movie if you watch the movie. Really. Yeah, like, in the context of the actual movie, I would say that's the standout. That is also probably the single scene that makes Emma Stone the front runner for Best Actress as well, is Audition. Uh, personally, Dragon, my favorite song from La La Land isn't even nominated. My favorite song from La La Land is the opening number, uh, Another Day in Sun, nice. which is just fantastic. But I'll say the uh, the Moana song, it's, you know, it's kind of catchy. It's kind of the main kind of theme of the movie, right? It's like the you know. Yeah. If that song won, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. Uh, it's For me, it's not the strongest song in Moana, but my favorite song in Moana is not anyone else's favorite song in Moana. So. Yours, is yours shiny? No, mine is uh, the... Oh, I don't even... Uh, You're welcome. Where, where you are. Where you are. All right. <laughs> Which is, like I said, it's no one else's favorite song. No one else. Well, again, the Moana music doesn't quite hit me until I, I, I when I get on DVD, I'll, I'll rewatch it. Maybe the songs that hit me better. So the first time, yes. yes. Anyway. So yes, Deadpool rap should be on there in some existing category, but it's not. Anyway, <laughs> no, no. but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think City Stars might get out of the audition, but if audition is like the bigger, bigger deal, like you mentioned, I think it'll pro- that, that'd probably be the case. And I, I think Lala has a cinch, is what I'm saying. Either way, definitely, and it's one of those things where, like, I, the Oscars might feel bad for nominating La La and La La Land against each other because yeah, that, well, what's the deal with that? Well, I'm just saying because it it makes La La Land impossible to win every award it's nominated for. <laughs> it's very, it seems a little unfair. So we're, not only we're we putting La La Land in practically every category, we're also putting it up against itself. <laughs> God, and you know what? Whoever wins, it's gonna be the same guy walking up on stage. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, Take that, Lim Well, Miranda. Oh, God. <laughs> let's get to original score. Um, oh, God. I haven't seen a lot of these, but. Uh, okay. I've listened to a little bit of the Jackie score. Yeah, it's okay. I definitely have some snubs yeah. for this one. Let's face it, though. La La Land's probably going to get it for the score. La La Land, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Lion, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Lion. And also Moonlight as well. Mo- the music in Moonlight is very powerful. Um, I got two snubs for okay. big snubs for music. I think actually it would have been really strong contenders for music. Would they? One of them? No, no, believe me. Hey, look, I, I like it. Doesn't mean I'm just saying these like for the best music. I okay. think Kubo actually really should have been a legitimate nomination. That's, that's, cool. a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's Mark, uh, it's, it's, it's like something. M.A., those are the initials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the point is, like, or Dario, something Dario. The point is, like, the score for Kubo was was really strong. Now, honestly, I think that would have won if, if it were nominated. At least it should win if it were nominated. The other one, though, this one would be the underrated one, because this is the one would definitely be, like, a political which was like, no, let's not put it on there. Uh, Batman v Superman had a really good score. Let's face it, it did. Mm-hmm. Come on. Batman v Superman had a good score. Don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> I have little. There is video proof of you saying you love the score of Batman v Superman. Is there? Yes. Yeah, you're right. There is. There is. Okay, you're right. Yeah. It, 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 I'm not it, saying it will win. It I'm would, saying it'd be a strong nomination. I, I, yeah, fine. They say what you will that Batman v Superman. They give the score was great. Again, the opening that that Bruce Wayne saying that dun, 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 and Wonder Woman's theme. A lot of great themes in that movie. 
Yeah. Okay, the uh, point is Kubo would win were it nominated. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the actual nominees, like I said, uh, I as much as I like La La Land, it, yeah, La La Land, I probably would have to give it to. Yeah. Moonlight though, Moonlight, though, like I said, Moonlight's freaking great. Lion is great as well. Uh, I wonder how Passengers. I love Thomas Newman. He's, he's really good at doing score. I heard the music for Passengers is excellent, actually. It's like by far the best thing about the movie. If I've well, heard, again, Thomas Newman's an excellent. He's one of the best, one of the one of the great composers that Thomas Newman. If I've heard any good, anything good about Passengers, it's definitely in the music. So. Is it really getting bad buzz? I mean, is it really getting yeah, like bad reviews? It's getting pretty bad reviews, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, and speaking of bad reviews, <laughs> let's get to no. Are you kidding me? There's only three nominees! Yep. yep. There's yep. only three yep. nominees! Oh, God. <laughs> Deadpool's not... Oh, okay, anyway. <laughs> so... Well, I'm, I'm going to hope that it goes to Star Trek Beyond. <laughs> oh, God. Really? You're that against Suicide Squad? No, no, no. I'm actually, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of personally pulling for Suicide Squad. I don't know. I was trying. To, okay, now let's let's be completely fair here. So, like, I'm just about to blow and smoke on that one. Let me let me actually analyze it. I haven't really thought about this. Right. But I mean, you know, Suicide Squad. They had good makeup on Killer Croc. Not really Quinn, I guess, is a decent judge. Joker. Well, let's. You know, Joker, I, you know it's been, like I still I'll, I'll still defend the look of the Joker. I I will. It's unique. It went, over, it went overboard on the tattoos. It's unique though. It's it it is very striking. Um. Yeah, like I said, I'm personally going to pull for Suicide Squad here. Just because, A, it's the only one I've seen. Like, I, I have no idea what a man called Ove is. I assume it's foreign. But I should, I, I, I'm sorry. I say that like it's like a totally, like, oh, I assume it's foreign. Well, I, I say, let, let me say this. Sergeant Bean, I think, has more, has, has more opportunities with the makeup and the hairstyle shine because, again, you have different alien races, you have all that stuff going on. Suicide Squad, you have a few, very few select characters, and to be, I mean, Killer Croc is a really good makeup job, I'll give him that. Hairstyles, I mean, Harley Quinn's your only real chance to explore on that one, and in terms of that, I mean, you have tattooing. I'm just saying, I think it more diverse, <laughs> more impressive stuff from Star Trek Beyond than you do with Suicide Squad. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm just saying, again, I don't want to just, I'm not just poo-pooing Suicide Squad, I'm just saying, or because I'm mad about that, but I'm just legitimately saying, again, I think Star Trek fans get more diversity versus, you know, with the Suicide Squad. So. And I would say, to be fair, I would say Deadpool would definitely be a solid domination as well, just and for again, Ryan Reynolds alone, just for that face. Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to foreign language film, which I, I yeah, don't we, have uh, any of these. I'm, again, let's just I'm voting so purely on the title, like the sales oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give it to you, the salesman. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just for having a, just for having a nice uh, title. Tana actually looks interesting, you know, just based on the poster. Couple couple native people standing by a volcano. Well, yeah. I'll say Land of Mine just kind of has kind of a neat kind of oh, like, you know, has a, has a I title that makes me want to just check out what it's about. Very cultural. It's, it's right now. I'm just saying, land of mine just kind of. It kind of sounds like it might be a landmine, so I want to watch. Oh God. It. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I'm, I'm sure these are I'm all. I'm just saying, I'm, stories about landmines are powerful. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure these are all great films, but, you know, unfortunately, there's no, like, Pan's Labyrinth or anything like that that crossed over into the mainstream. That, like, I, I've never even heard of any of these films until the Oscars came out. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to. All right. Sorry, sorry, fans of foreign language films. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we don't know. That's all we're saying. So that's that's boo that's boo boo on us. That's that's nothing. It's the films themselves. Sure. Um, okay. Film editing. Arrival. Hacksaw Ridge. Hell or High Water. Moonlight. La La Land. Mm. Now think about it. And be objective. I would honestly cut Arrival out. And really? I'll tell you why. Okay. What do you got? Because I just. There is a good like there is a good trick in Arrival storytelling wise that I won't give away that does have to do with the editing. Having said that, Arrival is just very slow paced and I think the pacing is just kind of a problem with that movie. Like there's a lot of like very very long takes that just could have been trimmed down. And so for that reason alone, I would personally take away Arrival. Um Hell or High Water's lean or mean, lean and mean. It's only 110 minutes. It's definitely the shortest of the 
which in a way I think is kind of a good thing. You you know me, Dragon, especially like with TV seasons and stuff like that, and probably movies too. Uh, for the most part, I do kind of like to err on the side of brevity, and actually Hell or High Water does a great job of that. Moonlight, to tell you the truth, Dragon, I really need to see Moonlight again because I was, like, I saw it, like, I was just really So how did they go about the editing for the main character? Tell me that. Like, was that, like, an act-by-act thing? Or was it like it was act-by-act. Of... It was act-by-act. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what they Because for a moment, I was thinking maybe that would give it the editing because if they kind of intercut each act with, like, kind of what's going on, you know, like Inception style, perhaps. No, no, and it's not really supposed to be like that either. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, like that... A boyhood type thing. Yeah, sure. But, uh... Well, I think don't you mean like kind of like Steve Jobs because it's like a three act structure sort well, of thing. Well, Steve Jobs is well, Steve Jobs isn't exactly that's that's more specific because Steve Jobs it's like three very very particular things. Well, so is this? Yeah, but I'm saying like the acts. Well, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I can. I, okay, I see what you're going for with that. Yeah, because the act, all three of these acts. Well, regardless, that is an. That is an editing move, though, so that is still something to be celebrated. I'm just saying that... Steve Jobs is set, like, that's set in, like, in conference halls, and Moonlight is a little bit more expansive. But, yeah, you've got a point that each act kind of tells a, a distinct story that kind of builds upon itself. Well, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call All that. Right. Unless, uh, again, unless they're kind of jumping on the La Land bandwagon, uh, Moonlight's probably going to get it, but I think Hackless Hacksaw Ridge probably should get it. I haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge, so I really wouldn't know. Um, I'm so sorry, Dragon. I'm trying to let my personal feelings not cloud me, but I'm going to have to say La La Land here. I'm so sorry. Tell me why. How's the editing? Super cool. <laughs> well, first of all, there's just a lot of like cool tricks and whatnot, uh, like montages. There's a lot of montages in this. We all know how cool montages can be. A lot of like color, it does have a little... color adjustments and whatnot. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's starting to sound like this might be the front runner instead of Moonlight, but uh... I think I think either or would be like Moonlight. I, I definitely think it's Moonlight's worthy. But like I said, just personally, I, I need to watch Moonlight again because I like I saw that movie at a late night screening. And I was very tired when I saw it, so I really do need to see it again. But. Uh, it's it might be one of those things like Birdman where I really liked Birdman the first time I saw it, just like I really liked Moonlight the first time I saw it. But when I rewatched Birdman, I was blown away by it, and I saw layers about it that I didn't see before. And so I have a feeling that Moonlight might be the same sort of situation if I were to go back and see it again. You know, we never did talk about Birdman. I'm waiting on Monkey for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, monkey. We're talking to you, Mister. I'm too busy for everything. God. I'm calling them out. Okay. Do you want to do the uh, the guessing game with the documentary short subject as well? Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I, honestly, just because I purely purely because I've seen it on Netflix or I've seen it somewhere. Like uh, I haven't watched it, unfortunately. But the White Helmets. I'm just gonna go with White Helmets because that's the only one I've seen. All right. Just period. <laughs> um. I'm gonna go with extremist because even though the uh, the title the poster looks depressing, but it's a cool title. <laughs> oh, <Sinister>. so <laughs> like the poster fun... looks. It, it does not look like a fun documentary, but extremist is a cool word. You know, I saw that one going around too. The title of that one somewhere. I don't know where the you know, extremist, but let me say this though: just one seems to be the coolest though. I'm okay. not saying she win. Just the one seems cool is probably Joe's violin. <laughs> Again, I'm still, I'm still, I'm just gonna randomly say the white helmets, but I still think Joe's violin is still really kind of mostly. That, that's just the cool. It seems like just like a guy's profile picture or something, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't really see like a movie poster or anything. It just seems like if they got the violin, the name's not even on the poster like the other ones. It's just Joe's violin. I don't think, I think, I don't think it's a real. I don't think it's a real uh, short, short film. Oh, I think I think they ran out. I thought we, we can't think of anything else. We're just gonna put some like we got the violin called Joe's violin. <laughs> Dragon, I've got to say, this is one of the more entertaining podcasts that we've recorded in a while. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, I don't think that's a real nominee to get okay. Trump pull one over us. Anyways. Okay. I want to see proof of There's a trail. I'm going to check out that trail after this to see if Joe's Violin is an actual <laughs> is an actual nominee. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, Fire at Sea. Best documentary, Fire at Sea. Oh, God, I am not your Negro. 
I have seen three. I have seen three out of the five. Weeks. Okay. Life animated OJ made in America 13th. I have seen like the first segment of OJ made in America. So that's the only one I can really oh, you gotta speak watch of. the whole thing. You don't want to keep watching know, it, man. I know, I know. So, uh, unfortunately, I, let me out. The other ones just they're, again, they're not really available on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Otherwise I would have given them a shot. Cause that's why I do with 13th. Cause believe me, I had no interest in 13th, but then uh, it was on Netflix and I watched the other two. So I figured I might as well watch at least as much of the Oscar nominees as I can uh -huh. that are available to me. I got it's the only one that I really had a choice of. And this one, they really sell the heck out of this on Netflix. So I finally gave it a shot. Uh, so let me say this. Uh, so again, if I were to say, I unfortunately got no idea. Uh, <laughs> I am not your Negro. Again, unfortunately no idea. Uh, Life anime was a good one. I think that was good. Uh, it has a really good kind of. Sh it tells a really good story, and I like that it's kind of we're, we're with the kid and we're with uh, Owen Suskin is the subject of the film, and you know he is the uh, we we track him in the present day and we go back as we learn his story and we kind of we see how that's informing the story as it's going forward. So that is a good film. It really that's that's available on Amazon. Last mm -hmm. I checked, uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, O.J. Made in America. I was uh, for me the winner. I, honestly, in all fairness, it probably shouldn't count because you know it's pretty much a mini series, but it's, it was released in theaters like a really long movie. And oddly enough, it was on TV recently, which I think is just kind of kind of serendipitous. Mm -hmm. Regards to points, O.J. Made in America will be my bet, and I, one I think is good. I think it should win, and I think it has a, has a really good shot at winning. However, this is going to be the whole thing. Maybe there might be an Oscar kind of bias going on here of. 13th is being talked about most out of all of these. I, Thir now, tell me the premise of this one, Dragon. Okay, Here's I've what disappointed Netflix, me about this. But I haven't really, uh, I haven't tell really you. looked into it. Go ahead. Let me tell you. So I finished this. Uh, I finished it yesterday. I kind of gave it another, a little bit of another watch today. Just kind of make sure I didn't miss anything. But 13th, honestly, I think it's false advertised, honestly. Because that poster okay. looks a lot more interesting than the movie is. Uh-huh. It is a See, good poster. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The poster and kind of the description, it's, it sounds like it's going to be about like kind of injustices with, with black people being put in prison. Okay, right, right. But sure. it's not. It's just kind of going through uh, injustice to African Americans through the whole through the ages. And again, it's, it feels like it's it's not a story. It's told in documentaries. It's like, okay, it just feels very like I could watch this on TV and on, like, like a 48-minute thing on TV. So it doesn't feel like... What you're saying is it's not very narratively focused. It's not narrowly, folks. It feels like again, honestly, this one out of every of all the nominees, man, you know, this one feels like most of like, hey, we didn't have enough. This one feels like it, it, if it's gonna get, it's gonna get out of like we need we need nominate we need more black Oscar winning mm -hmm. films and categories. And this one again, this one just if it wins, that's gonna be that's gonna cement that that rumor there. But I think OJ is the one that definitely should get it. That one's quality. It's telling a narrative. It's it's using factual things. It's not biased. It's it, it, it has a great build to it again. It's five part. I know it's really long. This so it's kind of cheating, but at the same time, it's it's really powerful. I would definitely subject. like. I, I'm rooting for OJ as well, just because I like the gimmick of like yeah, like an eight hour documentary winning. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I really kind of drew. Oh my god, an eight hour, <laughs> you know, film. And again, honestly, OJ should get. It. I'd be really surprised and impressed if Life and Me because that was a good film too. Just again, OJ was like really yeah, impressive. Yeah. Like OJ was like a walk. Wow, that's what I, I keep telling people about OJ. Yeah. But as as you as proof by Tiki here, but uh, again, thirteenth it just again it's not because of the subject. It's purely because again it's just it's false the advertising. It could, just isn't great. The execution is really blunt. It's just people basically keep cutting to people like weighing in on the subjects as uh -huh. we keep going through the ages. It just feels like okay, this is like something I could. It feels like like an hour TV special versus a movie. It's not a movie at all. I hear you. I hear you. And again, this one's getting all the attention. Like, there's you, let me just say one more thing. That's like on Netflix as well. There's like it's so it's such a big deal. Like Oprah is talking to the director of the film and just like about the film. That's like an hour thing on Netflix. It's like, hey, we're oh really. <laughs> so again, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna smell foul play if thirteen if thirteenth wins because it's not that interesting. It's, it's I believe me. OJ and Life Hammer are the far superior choice. I haven't seen the other two, so again, that's again, it's up on them. But thirteenth, thirteenth wins. Sounds fishy. All right, I hear you. I hear you. The point is, documentaries were pretty strong this year with OJ and Life Hammer. I'll say. Okay, here we go. Directing, uh, Denise Villeneuve, Mel Gibson, D Damien Chazelle, Barry Jenkins, or Kenneth Longerman. This, I think, is another tough category, because all these films, at least from what I've seen, look look pretty amazing. So, again, that's a title tribute to the director. Yeah, I, I definitely, again, it's one of those things where, I'm sorry, Dragon, but La La Land... I don't know. I think I don't know, Gibson. Gibson I, here's the thing. I think everyone has a legitimate shot at it. Quite honestly, I everyone loves a comeback story. And if Mel Gibson were to win, it would be a good kind of Hollywood comeback story. And I think the, the scenes I, voters might be considering that. 
the clips I have seen seem very well executed, well, well, just kind of put together. And I got to put that all, a little bit on uh, on Gibson. Well, Mel so. Gibson's always been fantastic at directing. Yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. So yeah, part of me really wants to give it to Gibson, quite honestly. So, but then again, I'm hearing amazing things by Manchester by the Sea. So that honestly, I think it's between uh, Axel Ridge and Manchester by the Sea. I think if honestly, I think if Lala Land gets it, it's going to be pure because we'll be nominated for the other things. So just kind of coalesce that okay. No, no, I, I disagree with that. I, I kind of strongly disagree with that because I think out of all the categories, besides maybe like something like best picture or song, I I think directing is one of the things that La La Land is in strong contention for. Um, uh, just because of the ambition of that movie and just like when you watch it, just the the scale of the musical numbers. Like I'm telling you, Dragon, it's like something out of the 1940s or something like that. Like just the scale and the and the uh, choreography and just how it all forms together. I'm telling you, Damien Suzel, he directed the hell out of that movie. Well, look, I'll take your word for it, and I'll go as far as uh, I think it will win. But uh, what probably should win, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say I'm going to go with Hacksaw Ridge just for the okay. heck of it. I'm going to say I think okay. Hacksaw Ridge probably should win La Land. I'll say probably will win. I would say probably the, uh, the biggest contender for – for the award besides Damien Chazelle, I would probably say Barry Jenkins from Moonlight. Um, again, that, again, I think from what I've been hearing, attraction. yeah, I'm hearing great things about Moonlight. I'm hearing again with this kind of the way this is like put together, it might really be a good one for the director too. And then also, uh, Denis Villeneuve, uh, he is, he's kind of like an up and coming sensation right now. He is really coming into his own. So Hollywood might want to kind of give him the spotlight. Well, it's kind of like the, you know, the hot new kid on the block. Well, speaking of the hot new kid on the block, I do have one snub here. That'd be Tim Miller. <laughs> of, course, of course. Seriously, how great. It would have been really nice if Tim Miller, if the movie didn't get it, if Tim Miller at least got it for, you know, at least nominated for a director. The nomination would be solid. Mm -hmm. Also, I it probably wouldn't happen, but I, I would have loved to see Shane Black sneak in there for the nice guys. Yeah, it would have been nice. I'm just saying, I think, again, Deadpool, yet another, again, the, again, the screenplay and the direction is really, really strong on Deadpool. I think those two actually really kind of warranted at least the nomination. I mean, I'll definitely agree with you on screenplay. Yes, but, uh, I don't know. Again, Tim Miller is a really is... solid director. He brought he brought it. He's the most faithful kind of directing kind of in terms of adapting something we've ever seen. All right. Okay, let's get to... Oh, my God. Costume design. Okay. Yeah, this one's... Uh, I'll, I'll just... We'll give it a while. Man, let's move on. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of it looks real nice in old Hollywood and design. Let's just go forward. Uh, you know what I think's gonna win though is fucking Florence Foster Jenkins. It'll be it'll be hilarious if Jackie gets it. Yeah, I, I could see Jackie getting it. I, I know. I'm saying Jackie's nice. I'm just saying well, everyone's going to expect La, La Land to get this, but then Jackie's gonna get, or someone else is going. I think the point is like someone else is going to get it. But I think uh, the only one that probably is I, all of them are decent. Well, is Meryl Streep in uh, Florence Foster Jenkins? Yes. Your favorite yes. person ever. No, don't, don't, don't bait me, Dragon. Don't okay, bait me. Don't okay, bait me. okay. Let's pacify <laughs> La La Land. La La Land should and probably will get it, so let's right. not entertain the notion. I don't hate Meryl Streep as a person. I just want to make that clear. I just think, like, the Academy Awards are just ridiculous when it comes to nominating her so much for stuff that she probably does not deserve to be nominated for. I just want to distinguish between the two. Don't hate Meryl Streep. Kind are of hate sure? how overrated she is. I thought you. I thought you. I thought you really didn't like Meryl Streep, though. Dragon, don't. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move forward. Politics. <laughs> Anyways. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So cinematography. Uh, Arrival. La La Land. Lion. Moonlight. Silence. Uh, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I, again, I'm sorry. I'm so redundant here. I'm so fucking redundant. Oh, don't. Again, honestly, La La Land does things in terms of what I've seen. I think La La Land looks visually stun most stunning out of, out of the nominees. I will give you that. Having said uh, that... Arrival would be the second on the list, though. It'd probably be La La Land, then Arrival. I would also like to give a big shout-out to Lion as well. Um, Lion has a lot of really good kind of, like, helicopter tracking shots. Like, a lot of, like, really, really good vistas and landscape shots. Uh, really sweeping. Uh, it showcases both India and Australia in a very kind of visually stunning sort of way. So honestly, like Lion is kind of like that underdog that I saw at the last minute that now I'm really fucking pulling for. But uh, yeah, I, I think you're right that La La Land is probably the contender here. And Silence. But Arrival has some striking, striking images, though. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm just saying just purely in terms of the camera work. Um, Alright. And Silence, I, I haven't seen Silence, but it, that could sneak in there as well. Who knows? Okay. Animated feature. Here we um, go. I, that's pretty safe. Uh, honestly, this one boils down to is the one that we know it's going to get this, but we know it should get it, though. I, pretty I, much. Yeah, I don't really think there's much to be fair, should be on that. <laughs> let's say this, though. Again, to be fair, honestly, these two both should get it. They're both really both really good films, but in different ways. In Zootopia, any other year, Zootopia would be definitely my top contender, and I'd be rooting for Zootopia in any other year. Honestly, we here's the thing: Zootopia is is going to get it. It's gotten it for a lot of the other award shows. That's not necessarily like a guarantee, but I think it's pretty safe to say Zootopia also it earned it. Though Zootopia earned it as well as Cuba. They both earned it. Both are really good films. They're in their own ways. I think Zootopia is a sm slight more edge because again, I think Cuba is like one of those great films that gets overlooked. Zootopia has also got the uh, the social commentary thing going for it. Like, yes, which I think is definitely edge. going, especially in this year, it's going to bolster totally. that. Totally. Which, uh, and to, be the, fair, to be fair, I do think it's a very valid reason to give it the award because I think kids growing up in these troubled times that we're living in kind of need a movie like Zootopia, need a message like you Zootopia. Know, you know if the Red Turtle was a Miyazaki film? It is a, it's not a Miyazaki film, but it's definitely a Ghibli film. Oh, sorry. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep kind of lumping the two. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I'm just saying you kind of associate Maybe Miyazaki with. You know, it's, it could be good. The title's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Who knows? But anyway, again, Kubo, again, they both, Kubo and Zutopia put in a lot of good legwork, both really good, but yeah, it's probably going to go to Zutopia. Yeah. Okay, now we get into the big ones. Uh, okay. Now, I have seen all five of these dragons, so I can totally speak to this. Uh, all five of them are fantastic performances. I'm going to say Will and Should Win is definitely Viola Davis. Viola Davis is freaking phenomenal in this in fences she's easily the most compelling thing about fences uh nicole kidman is heartbreaking she's heartbreaking in lion oh my god tell me how michelle williams is michelle williams uh honestly out of these five she'd probably be the one that stuck with me the least out of these five. Oh, really i'm hearing amazing things about her in that movie don't get me wrong she's great having said i i like one of the reasons i say that is she does have the least amount of screen time out of anyone so that's a factor basically she's it's one of those kind of like one scene nominations you know what i mean like she's in a few other moments in the movie besides the one scene but the one scene is why she's nominated if you know what i mean part of me thinks that that uh, Viola Davis would get it because she's in more of the movie than Michelle Williams. That's what, for just based on what I'm hearing. All honesty, Viola Davis should fucking be nominated for Best Actress and not Best Supporting Actress. That's what I'm saying. It she feels like she's just kind of even more than Denzel does. That's what I'm saying. She feels uh, that's why I think she get out of these like she has because like, she's more intricate to the thing than the rest of them. But that's only because she probably is in the wrong category. And she's probably in the wrong category because the studios designed it for her to be in the wrong category because they know there's more competition in the best actress category. Maybe. That's the thing. So uh, it sounds like it would be tailor made for Michelle Williams, but then again, Viola Davis is given again. She should probably, she's sure. probably going to get it. Sounds to be just based on sound. Sounds like Michelle Williams probably should get it, though. Uh, you for know, supporting versus like yeah. who is actually, you know. You know me, I'm a little light on Hidden Figures love, but Octavia Spencer, for me, was probably the highlight of the movie. She's a good actress. I've seen her in other things. Yeah, I like Octavia Spencer. And Naomi Harris is brutal as well. She, uh, Her character is, uh, you know, she's the drug addict mother of the main character. And, oh, my oh, God. Really, really, really like, gut-wrenching stuff there. Oh, cool. So, all five of these women are fantastic. Um, okay. Anyways, so let's uh, get That's to... Sweet. So, ah, there we go. Mahershala, by the way, Dragon, that's how you pronounce it. Mahershala. Mahershala. We've been Mahershala. pronouncing it long, wrong for like... Wait, so it's okay. not Mahershala? It's Mahershala. Yeah, Mahershala, right? Yeah, Mahershala. Okay, Mahershala. All right. Anyway, so Mahershala Ali, of course, we love him in uh, Luke Cage as well. Of course. Oh, my God. He's having a banner year. I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing Jeff Bridges is kind of just kind of doing his usual shtick, so I don't think he's going to. I think he's the weakest one out of these. Jeff Bridges is kind of just like, the, yeah, let's give it to him. We love Jeff. Have you seen Nocturnal <laughs> Animals by any chance? I have not seen Mo Nocturnal Animals. Okay, because, again, I said, you know, Michael Shannon's a good, you know, he's a good actor. He is. He is. Uh, I think Mahashira Ali is going to win this. Having said that, having seen Lion, 
I absolutely think Dev, Dev Patel totally should win this. I mean, and Dev Patel is a really good actor. I feel strong, very strongly that Dev Patel should win this award. I'm like, I know it's going to go to Maharshala Ali, but Mahershala. Yes, I know Mahershala. Mahershala. I, I know it's going to go to him because he he's just got all the traction. He's probably the safest bet in terms of like they have to give him like something. Dev Patel. Oh my! I uh, Dragon. He is just so powerful in Lion. I get, I, I again Lion. It's like I just saw it today. I'm very. I, I know what Patel's Lion. capable of. You don't have to sell me on Patel. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for that yeah. one. But, uh, I don't. Yeah. Know, I, I still think just given he's gotten the award before, like not not the Oscar, but just given the uh, Marcella Ali has kind of gotten that. I want to say he got a SAG or a uh, or a Globe for uh, mm-hmm. for his role. Anyway, so I, I think I think he's I think he's probably going to get it, uh, but it sounds like Patel probably should get it. I don't know. I think they're both good though. So we'll I would see. again. I would like the whole thing with Mahershal Ali is uh, he he's only in one act of the movie. So whereas Dev Patel is probably in about sixty percent of the movie, so Dev Patel definitely kind of makes a bigger impact on me than Ali yeah. does. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. And also, I would count out Lucas Hedges as well. Lucas Hedges might sweep in there with a surprise win. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, he's, I've seen I've saw he's him. Really good. He's really good. Um, right. Okay. Actress in a leading role. Okay, Dragon, this is the one I can kind of speak the least to. Because... Well, let me say this, though. We have uh, – I'm not familiar with the one in the top left, Isabella Huppert, but I, I'm uh, familiar with the rest of them. Now, I got to tell you, Ruth, uh, Ruth Nega, she is uh, – she's really uh, good in uh, Preacher, which you still have not finished, by the way. No, I haven't. But uh, she's really good in that series. And I was, she was in Age of the Shield, so Ruth Nega is a really talented actor. just want to give her a shout nice. out there. Nice. But she's really, really top-notch. Mm-hmm. Uh. Isabel Hoover, I've also heard, is, like, there's actually kind of some buzz that she might sweep in and steal this one. Honestly, I think it's between Emma Stone and Alec Portman for this category. I really do. I think you're right. I think you're right. And Because I'm hearing great things about Natalie Portman and Jack, using it's a very important role. But uh, at the same time, again, I think uh, might be, like, Emma Stone just, you know, getting it for, for a lot of land. Because, again, no, not... I've, Again, Emma Stone's an excellent actor. You don't have to sell me on Emma Stone, believe Trust me. She wouldn't just be getting it for La La Land. She would earn it for La La Land. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> both are really good actors. Both are really talented. However, even one just that both kind of like Emma Stone sounds to me from what I've heard about La La Land, especially from my my colleague here. What I've heard about, the, again, it's kind of like she's a really kind of the backbone of the movie, would I be totally, correct? Totally, yeah. Again, she's kind of like she's the driving kind of the driving force. kind of the face of the movie. Is that accurate? It's her and Gosling. They kind of have... I mean, it feels like if you had to put, say, one's kind of kind of the lead of the movie between the two, would you say it's Stone or would you between say it's Gosling? Between the two, it's Stone. Between the two, it's That's what I thought. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. So she's kind of like kind of fundamentally the movie's kind of about her, but, you know, Gosling kind of, you know, is the kind of the also be kind of wrapped around her. I mean, the movie wouldn't work without Gosling. Obviously. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's key, but I'm just saying, yeah. again, it's kind of her with him in the movie, but he's sure, all sure. over the movie. Anyways, points. Uh, yeah, it's really between... And then Meryl this... Streep, don't bait me with personal opinions, but I, I, I just don't, I, I, I just don't think the woman needs to be nominated every time she comes on ba- screen. Basically, what should be on this page, like an asterisk, or like in parentheses next to Meryl Streep, it should say again. <laughs> but what really should be on this page, Dragon, is Amy Adams for Arrival. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's I mean, really, you're right. Let's, that let's is. Let's a talk snub. about yeah. snubs. I think that's oh, probably God, the yes. biggest snub of the whole year. You're absolutely me. right. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, she shouldn't be up there Fucking for Meryl Street, man. <laughs> Even if she was there for actress, though, again, to me, it's from what I'm hearing, it's just it's between Portman and, and Stone. I think Stone's probably going to get it, but I think Portman's probably, I don't know, I'm hearing amazing stuff about Portman. I got to say, though, I got to say, if Amy Adams was up there for Arrival, I think she would have a legit shot, though. That's fair. That's fair. But, um... I think it's pretty not, safe to say. And let's not count out Isabel Herber because, like I said, I haven't seen the movie, but I've heard like she's kind of on a track to maybe steal it. I know, I know one thing. If Shreep gets it, it's gonna be like it's oh. gonna be Oscar funny business. Mm, it's like no, okay, no, let's, no, no. I I'm just saying it's going to be. <laughs> I'm saying it's unlikely because I think we have really strong competition between Stone and Portman this year. And yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and again, maybe Isabel Huppert kind of swooping in under the radar. So yeah, I think it's again, as much as I love Ruth Nick, I'm saying I haven't seen the movies. So I have no, I have no bearing on how she was. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, best actor: Casey Affleck, Andrew Garfield, Ryan Gosling, Denzel Washington. Oh boy, this, this is like we, Mortensen. Man, we got really strong competition for actors. All five of them. I, I don't know. Like 
fucking wonderful actors in their own way. How, how was Captain Fantastic? I have not seen Fa- Captain Fantastic. I'm just saying, like, Viggo Mortensen in general is a fantastic actor. Hmm. I want to see Captain Fantastic. Hmm. Fantastic. It sounds really fun. It sounds like kind of a lighter, kind of quirky movie. I love the I love the kind of character that Andrew Garfield's playing. So I mean, definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Hacksaw Ridge at some point. But uh, I've heard great things about Garfield. Um, yeah, and of course, he's a good actor too. We've seen Garfield's good stuff. I would probably say this is a two horse race between Casey and Denzel. Yeah, yeah, Denzel's probably got it. But uh, let's just say Denzel is a more showy performance, where Casey is the more nuanced performance. Yeah, honestly, you know who I I think I don't know I, I think Affleck didn't wait did Denzel win it in the SAG Awards? Do you remember? I don't remember. I think Denzel won it because I remember I think Denzel had a Denzel speech. Denzel won. Yeah, you're you're right. Denzel won. You know, a part of me I want Casey Affleck to win. Honestly, as much as I love Andrew Garfield, and I again as much as I'm intrigued by his character in that film, I would say I think I want Affleck to win it. I don't know. I think if they're again, I don't want to just say just because it's somebody's won in somewhere else. I don't know. Part of me thinks that Affleck is a really legitimate shot at. So I'm gonna say he's. I'm gonna say he's gonna win. I'm gonna predict that Affleck wins this. Believe it or not. And I'm gonna say Denzel's. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna put all my money on Affleck here. Okay. Okay. Where it's gonna pay off or not, who knows? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give Affleck a shot. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I think. I think Denzel's probably got the slight edge over Apple. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, it's a more showy performance. Yeah, again, let me say this, though. But from what I've heard, I've heard that, again, it's, you know, it's strange. I've heard you, the thing you brought up about Michelle Williams is she's kind of in it, like, sparingly, but in mm-hmm. really important parts. I, I heard that basically she's kind of like the big backbone of the scenes with, between her and Casey Affleck. So I haven't really, I've heard, like, she's kind of out of the two of them. She really kind of is. A, a huge part of the scene and he's he's there and he's just kind of he's good throughout so to me it sounds like i don't know i mean in terms of like if we're talking about the scene then yes then yes i would a huge part of the scene i guess i would say just from what i've heard it sounds like i would like casey Affleck to win so i say he should win but it's probably gonna be denzel okay and if yeah. ryan gosling won i wouldn't mind <laughs> just throw oh that. sure but again andrew garfield too I mean, i'd like to see that kid you get an answer mm-hmm. you know it's, He's a nice Vigo boy. Vigo Mortensen should be happy to be nominated for such a small movie. Hey, yo, Vigo, wave to the camera, would you? <laughs> Andrew, give the give the boy an Oscar. He's, just, he's, he's a nice lad. Give him an Oscar. Let him pat it. Oh, God. Okay, Dragon. Let's go through all of these things. Uh, like oh, I said, the only, the only one I have not seen is... Um, wait. Of course, there are two snubs on this one, but... Uh... Wait, have I seen all of these? Oh no, Hacksaw uh, Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge is the one I haven't seen. I'm sorry. Um, Stubbs, Deadpool, and uh, and the Beatles Civil War. I, I would not say Civil War. Come on, I'm Civil War I'm was sorry. really no, good. No, Come on, no. You it was a why? favorite of 2016. You know why? You know why well, Civil they, War would never get a Best Picture nomination? Because they're biased. No, because Civil War relies so much on having on you having seen other stuff to truly appreciate Civil War. I mean, Civil War is definitely, like, wonderful fan service. It, it's a great movie, for sure. But it's just, it, like, Civil War's got too much baggage attached to it. Uh, whereas Deadpool, I would say, yeah, sure. It, 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 and you know what, Dragon? It's like, see that missing space? Yeah, it should be Deadpool. See, see that missing space? <laughs> the nine out of the ten movies. <laughs> I mean, Oh, how- that just, oh my gosh, that occurred to me, yeah, they... Nine? It's nine? Yeah, it's nine out of ten. I thought it was eight. It's nine out of ten. Nine? It's they couldn't have stretched it one more? Yeah, exactly. One more? <laughs> you know, if the Os- why can't the Oscars have a sense of humor, Tiki? Why? <laughs> why can't we go to the Billy Crystal era of the Oscars and give them like, an extra slot? Why? Well, hey, Kevin Costner said that here at NASA, all white, all people should pee the same color. And that was like a big laugh moment in in Hidden Figures. Oh, that's a line. That's not the same. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Come on. And why can't they ask? Because, again, a lot of people people campaign for Deadpool. They've made fun of it. Like saying, hey, well, Deadpool, like uh, like seven-time Academy Award viewer, Ryan Reynolds. (laughs) Where's the justice, I say? Where's... Okay, so... Let me break down all these movies, uh, except for Hacksaw Ridge, unfortunately. Uh, 
arrival a very very thought-provoking piece like i said not the appropriately best. the first one because you're starting it there <laughs> arrival. uh not the best pacing and the pacing is probably the thing that kind of brings it down for me it, it's very very slow in the first half and takes a while to really get going once it gets going you're really into it fences is basically like an actor showcase it's basically like hey you like the play come see the play so Fantastic performances, definitely not the best movie, and I I would even say, I would even go as far as to say that Denzel Washington's directing choices are very questionable on Fences. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge, again, I haven't seen it, can't speak for it, want to see it. Hell or High Water, uh, it's lucky to even get nominated, I'll, I'll say that. Like, it's a fantastic movie, it's really good, but in terms of the movies that the Oscars usually go for... This is probably like the Mad Max Fury Road of this movie. This is like the closest thing that they came to nominating a mainstream movie this year, I would say. It feels like there's like there's the big guy in the secret Oscar room that's saying, okay, what are we nominating? All right. Oh, all right, War. Ah, you know, give the kid a shot. Just put him up on the band. Put him up on the mar- on the marquee. Let's just give him a shot. Uh Hidden Figures is definitely, like I said, the one where if we are gonna play like the whole like overcompensating for the Oscar so white thing of last year. I do not think Hidden Figures is a great movie. I only think it's a pretty good movie. So I, I think out of all these movies, it's it's my least favorite. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's really enjoyable. You know, it's a, it's a fun sit. It's like it's It looks fun. good. Again, I, I bet, definitely watch it. I was I like the trailer for it. It's like, okay, you got it. Again, I like kind of, it's sort of the biopic sort of stuff. I like that. Yeah. Like I said, it's just like for me personally, it's just it's not best picture material, but I can see why people like it. But again, I also kind of can see the political motivation behind it. So honestly, I tell you this, I, I'm sorry, you go through the rest of the way and okay, it, you know. okay. Uh, let's see, La La Land. We all know how I feel about La La Land. I don't, you know. Don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Really good old Hollywood favorite movie ever. Moving on. <laughs> Lion is probably like, like I said, Dragon Lion is so good that right now, like emotionally, it might be my number three of the year after uh, after Kubo and La La Land. It is such a powerful movie. Uh, Dev Patel really carries that movie. It's structured in a very interesting sort of way. I, I don't even want to give away the structure for you. Uh, Nicole Kidman is a freaking a devastating supporting role. But it's also very uplifting and inspirational at the same time. It's like, so yeah, Lion is a fantastic movie. I, I like again. I I was not expecting much out of Lion, Dragon. Like you said, like the trailer makes it look like a cheese fest. Yeah, there was a really bad shot of of a lion from the trailer. It's just, oh my god, it's like the worst seed. There's the worst integrated lion I've ever seen. It's like such a. You know what's funny? What? That lion is actually not even in the movie. Re- Get out of here! Are you serious? I'm not kidding. Is there's no lion in the film whatsoever? No, not none whatsoever. No. You're sure? I'm sure. So that that specific shot from that the trailer, specific shot is not in the movie. It's not. That was just that was just bait and basically the justifying movie. the title for the trailer. The title is justifiable once you get to the end, but I don't want to spoil what it means. But there's no there's no physical lion in no. the film. They just talked about. They don't even talk about a lion. What? The, what? Do you want me to just tell no, you? No, no, no. I'm just. I'm just. There's no physical line that led no. the crappy line. Why they put that in? Okay, we're just. Why <laughs> they put it in? It's ridiculous. Uh, Manchester by the Sea is a really good exercise in terms of like, hey, how can we make this film both as depressing as possible and you know, kind of have some humor in there as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of really fun, genuine moments in Manchester by the Sea in in the wake of just like crushing tragedy. <laughs> so it's a really interesting exercise. It's it's not the most fun movie in the world. I I honestly would hesitate to say I'm ever going to watch it again just because it's so heavy. We get props to Casey Affleck though. He's really making his mark in the world with you know, films like these. So good for, good for Casey. And Moonlight is one of the, like I said, I kind of feel guilty that I've only seen this once and I didn't see it in the best state of mind. I, I really do. I feel super guilty about that. I should watch it again. Uh, I, I, I mean, honestly kind of have to like reserve judgment on it a little bit until I can. I mean, not in the right state of mind. Well, like I said, I was just really tired. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't like, you know, I was kind of, I, I wouldn't say I was falling asleep. But I would say I was kind of like not paying attention to it as closely as I should have been on an artistic level. All right. So, 
if that makes sense. And of course, the missing category, Deadpool, which Deadpool. I love, but it's just it's just kind of like the last minute they kind of they kind of got rid of it for some unknown reason. Okay. All right. Uh, and in terms of predictions, I would say like La La Land is like a ninety percent shot at this point, but Moonlight might sneak in and surprise us. Now, let me let me say this. I think. For me, you're right. Moonlight is again. Moonlight, again, I keep hearing such great things about Moonlight. Unfortunately, again, unfortunately, can't see old movies, folks. This is what boils down to. My friend here, he's 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 much more, he's more close. This he's. I I I'm just lucky that I have a movie yeah. theater within walking distance of me. That as I'm saying, he has a theater a theater within I'm walking lucky. distance. Yeah. <laughs> he's very he's much luckier than well, I. Not only do I have a movie theater within walking distance, but it's a movie theater that kind of caters to these types of movies. So. I'm kind of yeah. So again, that's I'm double yeah. lucky in that way. He's got a twofer because he can also see all the Oscar nominees. Exactly, the Oscar sometimes exactly. they're missive, like when you can see an Oscar. I can't. I couldn't even see the founder, man. Oh well, the founder is just one of. Uh, anyway, it, my point. Of a disappointment, but uh, anyway, uh, the founder. So I think uh, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say La, La Land is, is is in the running in that thing. I don't think we can really kind of call like you know what you know should and kind of what we want to win, but. Uh, I don't know. Part of me just because again I haven't really seen it, is I I think it's like probably between like Rival Hexel Ridge and I'm sorry uh, between uh, La La Land. I'm trying to think about it. I can't. Sorry, my opinions keep kind of changing. For a second. But again, I think it's going to be between La La Land. Opinions change a lot for movies you haven't seen. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think La La Land's in the running, but you're right though. I think it's going to be between La La Land, Moonlight, and Manchester by the Sea. That's why I think it's going to be between those three. And I think Lion is kind of in the running, but uh, personally, I would like Manchester by Seed one, personally. All right, all right. And if Lion won somehow, I, I think Lion is probably like the biggest underdog out of all these movies. But if somehow Lion pulled out a win, I'd be like, all right, totally. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking if Fences and Hidden Figures wins, that's going to be a little... I think it's going to be them overcompensating. Think gonna, well, yeah, we then again, be. I think Moonlight is definitely... Like, Moonlight is the one that deserves to win, and it has nothing to do with race. It's just well, like, yeah, it's certainly. a really big movie. I'm just saying Fences and Hidden Figures are like their prime... Especially, Fences is primarily sold in, like, you know, two very well-known black actors are doing a really good job. It's basically doing a play, and we filmed it. Sure. Sure. Which is all nice and nice and good, but I mean, compared to all, basically, if that wins compared to like you know something like look on Denzel and Viola's David and Viola's face on that poster when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah, we did a successful play. We filmed it, and you're gonna watch it. Yeah, see what I mean? I'm just saying, if that movie wins, nothing and against fences, but if it over Deadpool, because we're cocky like that. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying though? If 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 a movie like Fences works, you know, it's pretty much you know, it's a play, but it's filmed. I don't if that wins over film to win, but yeah, I hear what you're I'm saying. saying it's something like fences or hidden figures when especially fences. If fences wins over like you know Axel Ridge or like you know La La Land or you know, or Moonlight, I think there's some some funny business going on. I, I mean, I, I highly doubt that's going to be the case. I really do. Uh, if anything, yeah. hidden figures is going to be the one that's going to be the upset. I mean, the most obvious thing competition fences has. I mean, a rival, rival versus fences. You know what I'm Why is that the most obvious? They have they have nothing in common. That's what I'm saying. They, I'm just saying. I think you know, <laughs> they couldn't be. They literally could not be more different from each other. This is very different from each other. I think a rival will be a little more spectacular than, than fences. Not that fences is impressive in the acting capabilities. Dragon, just rival. dragon, dragon. Fences has a dump truck. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so again, it's looking I mean, well in, but it's a tracking shot of the dump sh of the dump truck right at the beginning of the movie, right? So it it can't be a play. Okay, so so aliens versus dump truck—that's kind of what that those two boil down to. Basically, there's a little boil down the nominees here for you. Okay, we got. Okay, we have we have aliens and Amy Adams. We got uh, we have two really good actors in a dump truck. We, have we got gore and Christianity, just like blending Christianity and gore. Yes, yes, you know, basically, you know, awesome battlefield stuff with the pacifists. We got uh, bank robbers. Yeah, yeah. We got, no, which is fine. I'm just saying it's, it's bank robbers. We got uh, we got kind of our bio historical biopic, which is all nice and dandy. Just you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We got uh, I have no idea how to describe lion. But, uh, <laughs> of 
we get kind of our, our kind of our striking our striking drama. We have uh, kind of our really kind of nicely put together kind of our three X shirts. Again, impressive in terms of the kind of the execution with Moonlight seems. And uh, basically kind of our huge tribute to kind of old Hollywood kind of filmmaking with La La Land. So, yeah, basically a lot of interesting kind of flavors for our containers this year. It just sounds like, again, it's going to, for me, I'm pulling between Manchester and Moonlight. Those are the two I think are like the ones people are rooting for. I'm like, let's see if they can get up on La La Land because otherwise La La Land is just going to be a lock. There has been a backlash against La La Land. I won't deny that. That's what I'm saying. I think I, I'm, I'm rooting for Manchester by the Sea or Moonlight, but you know, one of those two, I'm, I'm rooting to kind of get it over La La Land. But let's just you know, give them a shot. All right. All right. I think it's La La Land. I'm just saying La La Land's impressive. I'm just saying, like, honestly, it's because it's not for so many awards. I'm just saying, like, come on. You, and Best Picture, too. That's, that's a little greedy. Come on. <laughs> like, you know, don't, don't be gluttonous, La La Land. Come on. Just take, take, a cat like, take three categories at most. Don't take all of them. Oh, I, it's going to take far more than three. I know it's going to take more than that. Far more. <laughs> but, uh, anyways. Hey, pick three and stick with it, man. All right. Well, Dragon, you need to actually, uh, I will be very curious to hear your opinions on these movies as you get to gradually watching them. Oh, yes, and you'll be the first that. to hear them. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, uh, that, that's about it. Stay tuned, and uh, stay tuned. I don't know for what. <laughs> uh, well, good luck, Jimmy Kimmel, and we can't wait to see the Ma uh, one thing I am looking forward to. I'm looking forward to see uh, Matt Damon's uh, appearance. He's going to make a grand entrance, and I can't wait to oh, see God. it. Because you, you're familiar. I've told you about the Matt Damon running gag, right? On Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. I've told you this. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your Matt Damon's arch nemesis is Matt Damon. I can't wait to see how they're going to play. They've done that with the Emmys. They're going to play it up for the Oscars. <laughs> okay. All right. And in the meantime, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not Oscars. good at reading these things, Dragon. I'm really not. <laughs> they really slacking off on. I'll say that much. I know. I know. I really am. I really. Where's Shalala Land now? <laughs> <laughs>